In this video, what we're going to look at is calculating the maximum and minimum values of trig functions that are written as combinations of sines and cos. Now, if you think about your sine graph and your cos graph, getting the maximum and minimum values of those is quite straightforward when it's just them on their own. However, if it's a combination of them, we have to do a little trick. And that little trick is that we have to take whatever the function is written in this form, our p cos x plus q sine x, and write it in one of the four forms that we know, which are our wave functions. So we have to write it in one of these four forms. Once we're able to do that, we're actually fairly quickly and easily able to read off our maximum and minimum values. Remember, the maximum and minimum value of sine and cos is 1 and negative 1. For sine, that occurs at 90 degrees or pi over 2 for its maximum value of 1 and 270 degrees or 3 pi by 2 for its minimum value of negative 1 and for cos at 0 and 2 pi is where its maximum value of 1 occurs and at pi is where its minimum value of negative 1 occurs. So using these little transformations we're actually able to just quickly transfer these over to see what they're like. Now the easiest way to show this is with an example. So imagine I post this question. Write 4 sine x plus cos x in the form k cos of x minus alpha with 0 less than or equal to alpha less than 2 pi. State the maximum and minimum values of the function and what values of x they occur at. So for one like this, even if it doesn't tell you to start with to put it in this form, instantly we have to think about putting it in one of the four forms. Now in this case it's given it to us. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter which of the forms we use. It should give us the same answer regardless. So I want to start by putting it into this form. And again, to do that, we think about the steps we talked about in our previous video. First thing we have to do is expand the bracket and write it out. So we write it as k cos alpha cos x plus k sine alpha sine x. Do that grouping together the coefficient terms. What I'm then able to do is equate it with the original function. So say find that equals 4 sine x plus cos x. And at this point I can see what my values for my coefficients are. So I've got my k cos alpha there and I've got my k sine alpha equal to the two coefficients. Well there's nothing written there but remember that's 1 times cos x. So hidden in here is a secret cheeky wee 1. So what that means is I can say k cos alpha equals 1 and k sine alpha equals 4. And using those, I'm able to combine them and say what tan alpha is, because remember tan alpha is k sine alpha over k cos alpha, which in this case is 4 over 1, which is 4. So now I'm able to calculate the two things I need. I'm able to calculate the value of alpha and I'm able to calculate the value of k. So doing the value of alpha, I can use my cast diagram again and look at the function. So I know cos is positive, so it's one of these two. Sine is positive, one of these two. And tan is positive, so again those two. All three of them are positive in that section, so it has to be there. So all I need to do in this case is quite simply do tan minus 1 of 4. Whatever the answer I get for that, that is where my alpha is going to be. And in this case, when I do that, I get 1.326 radians. And that's the three decimal places. What I can then do is get my value of k at the start. Well, I know that k, remember, is equal to the square root of p squared plus q squared. And p and q come from the coefficients in our original function. So in this case, it's the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared. 4 squared is 16, 1 squared is 1. So I know that k is equal to the square root of 17. Keep it in this form. Keep it as a third. Don't worry about doing it and rounding it. Because what I'm then able to do is say, right, therefore, 4 sine x plus cos x can be written as square root of 17 times cos of x minus 1.326 radians. So what I've done is I've rewritten this there. What I can now do is fairly quickly and easily read off our maximum and minimum values. Because remember, the maximum value for cos was at 1, minimum value is at minus 1. 
So the maximum minimum values for k cos are just k and minus k. So I know a maximum value is at the square root of 17. And I know my minimum value is negative root 17. It's then where they occur. Well, look at the transformation that's happened on the graph. Cos of bracket x minus 1.326. I know that that, for it to occur when it's the maximum value of square root of 17, I know that cos of x minus 1.326 to 6 equals 1 because that's where the maximum occurs and I know for the minimum it's cos of x minus 1.326 equals negative 1. Ignore the k's remember. At this point we want to know where the maximum minima occur and that's the case. So if we look at the first one what I get is that x minus 1.326 equals 0 because I know the maximum value one occurs at 0 and on the minimum, x minus 1.326 radians occurs when it's at 180 degrees, or in this case, because we're working in radians, pi. So I then know that my maximum value occurs when x is 1.326 radians, and my minimum value occurs at pi plus 1.326 radians. So in this case, it occurs at 4.468 to 3 decimal places. When we're calculating this sort of question and these sorts of values, these are the key things we have to remember. We can't just instantly read it off with this value. Yeah, sure, we could calculate it, but that would be a lot of work. We'd have to plot the graph. We'd have to make sure we looked at the behavior of it and where it occurred. Writing it in this sort of form here, so k cos of x minus alpha, k cos x plus alpha, k sine x minus alpha, and k sine x plus alpha, allows us to instantly just read off the maximum minimum values by looking at the k. Once we've done that, we can use what we know for trig graph transformations to figure out where it occurs with the x value. So in this example here, we knew our maximum minimum value was the k at root 17. So maximum was root 17 and the minimum was negative root 17. And to get the x value it occurs at, we know that for the maximum value of the cosine graph, cos of x minus 1.326 equals 1. That's the original maximum before any transformation is done. We know the original minimum occurs when cos of x minus 1.326 equals negative 1. So what we're then able to say is that x minus 1.326 equals 0, because on the x-axis that was where the maximum originally occurs, and we can solve it to get the x value. And we know that x minus 1.326 equals pi, because we know that's where the minimum originally occurs. And we can then just use our algebraic skills to solve this one easily. When we're transforming this to find the maximum minimum values, these are the steps and this is the kind of information we have to be able to use. This is how we have to be able to do it and this is how we have to be able to solve it.